Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Yesterday from Ukrainian intelligence we understood that they are sure that Ukraine targeted Ivan Hur's ship. It is so-called the Russian Avax ship, so it's used for the radar intelligence or surveillance. Luckily today we obtained some of the satellite images, they are not the best quality, but here you may see that there is the change on the aft part of the ship. So this ship and this one are the same. The Ukrainian sources say that the rocket hit the aft part. Well, with this quality it's really hard to say. Also they say that one of the missiles missed the ship and hit the piers nearby. But judging on the images I may say that with a high probability this ship was indeed targeted by some sort of the missile. Why? Because it is banking. So you may compare this image and it is staying straight with this one. Then the ship is rolling on this side. Also, Russia now uses the other ship to maintain this one. It wasn't done before like that. So there's some sort of the bank and the ship which is now supporting Ivan Hurs are two main evidence that something is not usual out there. I'm not stating 100% that this ship was hit, but there is the high probability again that it definitely happened. At the same time, if the ship definitely was hit, the damage to it is not really significant because it's still in one piece. I'm sure that Russia will repair it. The same stuff I may say about all the Russian ships in Sevastopol Bay after Ukrainian attack. Plus today Ukraine has reported about one more ship, Russian ship, that was targeted by Ukraine during the Sevastopol attack. They say about big landing ship, but Russia has just two remaining well, this one was Ukrainian previously, but Russia took it after they annexed Crimea. At first they wanted to return to Ukrainian army back in 2014, but later on when the war started in Donbass they refused to give it back. Mostly they used it for the spare parts, so it wasn't in the active operation, however it was now on the maintenance. Since Russia started to lose many of the landing ships, they invested some funds into rebuilding a stolen one. Yet it is hard to confirm the official Ukrainian information, because we don't have the real satellite image of this particular ship. Based on my experience, even with official notices, we should cross-check the information with satellite images or maybe with actual photos from the place. It would give more robust evidence of what actually happened. That's why I'm also checking Telegram, because their information appears much faster and what exactly you need. That's why I also have my own Telegram channel, where I update you constantly during all the day, so I highly recommend you to subscribe for my Telegram, you may find it in the video description just below. Guys, let's move to the events that happened near to Moscow around four days ago in the Krokus City Hall. We have some interesting statements from the Russian FSB officials and also Belarus president, so before showing you some of that conspiracy theory, let me switch to what Russian FSB meant manager or director said. Mr. Brastrykin, the head of the Russian FSB, he gave the interview, a short one, so this is the video, but I will not translate it for you in live, because it will take me lots of the time, so I will just say to you what he said over here. First he said that Ukraine trained those attackers, he said militians, in the Middle East. Ukraine trained those attackers. He said that those radicals are behind the attack, they were supported by Ukrainian special services. The Ukrainian SBU security organization, the analog of the Russian FSB, should be recognized as a terrorist organization. Kyiv is involved in the attack that happened in the Moscow region. Budanov, who is by the way a director of the Ukrainian GUR military intelligence, is a legitimate target for FSB from now on. The Russian FSB promises firm measures after the attack in Moscow. Hmm. We also have this very short clip, just a three second video, let me play it for you. His surname is Patrushev and now he's a council of the Russian security. But previously he was a director of the Russian FSB. And he is, by the way, a very close friend of Putin. Here you watched how he was asked a question. I says or Ukraine? He responded, Ukraine is responsible. So Russian officials blame Ukraine directly for the attack which happened in the Moscow region and they promised to respond. I told you already in my previous video that if it happens like that, I would blame FSB for that attack because they are interested in blaming Ukraine. It means they probably organized all of that event. 
I think that there is a high possibility that those attackers were just blind because they received orders from some sort of the Telegram group. The site which is behind organizing that stuff is unknown basically. And the known organization who claims the responsibility on that, well, it takes responsibility for many of the acts actually happening not from their side as well. Or maybe FSB has the connections out there too. Again, it's like just one of the theories that I personally support based on some certain facts. First of all, a very poor reaction by the Russian militia, police or the storming forces, whatever, even though that the office of the Russian guard is located very close to that place where attack happening, Crocus Hall. So attackers were allowed to stay there for required time for their duties. They were also allowed to leave this place and travel very long distance to Bransk Oblast. The other reason that unique guns or rifles were used in this attack, I already told you what kind of those were used. And let's go back to this video that I was up to show you at the very beginning of our topic. There were several guys wearing sweaters, blue sweaters, who were shouting close the door at the time, then people tried to leave the place. So let's watch this video. Close the door. Close the door. All of them wearing like the same uniform. The blue sweater, jeans. This one, this one and this one and also one on the left. Here we have a jacket, so it's a no-go, it's different guy, also he sits with some sort of the woman. All of them generally reacted very calmly to this situation. But the most important is the guy on the left, very close to the cameraman. Because he looks very damn similar to the guy who detained one of the attackers. I mean, look at this part and look at this part, a very similar eye line. Also, this part of the face, which is colored green out here, is very similar. However, guys, it's just a conspiracy theory for now. But this version has some certain probability to leave. According to my own opinion, again, even without uh, those kind of the pictures, rushes behind it, and there's the high chance that they organized it for purpose using some of the brainwash tactics to act as they want through the telegram channels or maybe their own FSB religious influencers. I told on my telegram that I believe this theory 100% but now I think that this case is very swampy or fishy you may call it so it's really hard to get a proper evidence without any speculation so I have to speculate a little right now in favor of the version of the FSB responsibility. I think it happened like that, but just based on what I see in internet. I wish we had more information about this attack. Or I guess I have just obtained the information that those people are totally different. There is the other video of the guy and he is different. I cannot publish it here, there's the rifle, so this conspiracy theory is fake from what I see. But it doesn't mean that Russia couldn't be responsible. There's a book in internet, it's called FSB Explodes Russia. This book is written on events happened in 2000 and 1999, then there were first Putin's elections. In this book there is the evidence of the Russian FSB responsible for blowing up the Russian residential houses or buildings. Google Rezan Sugar. Rezan is the place, the town in Russia, and sugar is not a sugar, it's the explosives. So please check it out to understand what Russian FSB is able to do. So also based on the Russian history, on what they are able to do with their citizens, the false flag operations in 2000s which promoted the Russian barbarian actions in Chechnya, the same stuff they might do over here promoting, for example, new mobilization of the Russian soldiers to fight in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Bloomberg came out with the article that in the close circle of Putin, they do not believe that Ukraine is responsible, however, they will do their best to blame Ukraine for the attack. Meanwhile, the self-proclaimed president of Belarus, Lukashenko, tells a completely different story. Yes, it is a real picture taken from today. He pets a dog during a meeting with his generals in command headquarters. A classical Dr. Evil. Well, anyways, he says that Belarus prepared the closer of the border in case those attackers would go to the Belarus territory and they planned to do so. So he stated that those attackers were planned to go to Belarus. Actually, there is no border between Belarus and Russia. They're in the same so-called customs union. 
So Belarus stated that the main aim of attackers was to leave Russia to Belarus and then proceed I don't know where, but because they closed the border, attackers turned to the south to Ukraine. They were actually captured in the Bransk Oblast, but closer to Belarus than Ukraine. So if, as Putin says, the window on the Ukrainian border was prepared for the attackers, why did they go to Belarus at first? As I say to you, there is actually no border between Belarus and Russia, no border control, nothing. But the border with the Ukraine is probably one of the most secured nowadays in Europe, at least. Mine soldiers, razor wires, walls, whatever. But they decided to go there. Hmm. Lukashenko and Putin are unable to come out with the same story. Also very strange as for me. Those attackers who were captured, probably you know what happened to them. Yes, Russian FSB just tortured them. So if they say that they really were hired by Ukraine, we shouldn't believe in that bullshit. Because under those methods performed by FSB, anyone would tell anything. By the way, here is what Belarus dictator said on the meeting. He prepares for so-called defense against Poland near to Suwalki corridor. How many kilometers are there to Russia to Kaliningrad region from our border? 42 kilometers, it was said. Lukashenko says that it's really nothing. Lukashenko asked his general whether he is sure that the troops are enough to hold the line. He answered that there is a military planning document. All actions are land. What he wants to say is that they use their personnel in the actual terrain to know the roads, to know where and how to do their actions. It's basically what we may read over here. So Belarus is now preparing for some sort of the military activity close to Suwalki corridor. We have official video about it. Also Lukashenko said that he knows who is behind the attack and he'll present all of the information to Putin. He will say, Putin, it is Putin. <laughs> Guys, we have some breaking news from Serbia. President of Serbia wishes said that there is a great threat for his country. He wrote about it in his Instagram. Let me translate the message for you. Now it is hard to say for me what news we obtained in the last 48 hours. The national life interests in Serbia and the Serb Republic are under direct Threat. In the coming days, I'll tell the people of Serbia about what challenges we're going to face. It will be hard as never before. If you know the history, it was hard in Serbia many times. We will fight, Serbia will be victorious. Could it be the beginning of one more war between Serbia and Kosovo? It is really hard for me to tell at this point, but probably something is going to be not normal in Serbia in the coming days. Alright my friends, let's quickly review the military map. For today we have the same update. Front lines has been clarified, just minor changes on the front lines. It means that the main attack of the Russian army slowed down or bogged down. Well, if they use the China-made golf cars, it is understandable. Yeah, it's just a crazy move of Russia, they just throw everything to the front lines. But still what worries me here that Russia advanced probably across this river. So it was yesterday and it is today. You see this gray area after this river. It is not a good sign. So Russia dares to go to this direction. I know that Ukraine should have a defense line somewhere near because this area is very, very important. There are two roads and Russia might use them to assault. It's very important to keep them at this part of this river. So they will advance to this area, taking all of this territory. I, I believe that it might happen during the April months, but during the summer campaign, they'll try to move even further. The military experts say that there is the chance that Ukrainian defense would collapse, but I don't think that it is possible. Yeah, it's hard for Ukraine to fight in the current conditions without the major resource from our major ally, the United States of America. But we have some of the good news coming from the Congress. Probably Mike Johnson finally decided to put the deal for voting in the coming weeks. There is the information coming from the Republican side that he might do it after Easter. As for the rest of the front lines, there are no significant changes. I know what is happening right now. We even have some of the fighting combat images or clips, but I'm unable to show you them on this platform. For that, please subscribe for my Telegram in the video description just below. You may find the link for it. Probably I can just show you the screenshot, this picture. This is the Russian artillery system Nona S, 
with the track full of artillery shells. It was targeted by Hamas, and it's not the only target of Hamas for today. The result is just a plan on the ground, nothing left after the Hamas strike. The French defense minister has confirmed that France will transfer 78 of the Caesar artillery systems to Ukraine plus some of the shells. And about the Czech initiative with shell support of Ukrainian army, the initiative expanded because we have many more participants, so Ukraine will obtain one and a half million of artillery shells. There were some speculations about that news before, but now we have a real confirmation from the Czech officials. Awesome. One and a half million shells could be really a game changer for Ukraine for this year to obtain the military support from the United States. Only United allies are able to help Ukraine to stop the Russian assault. We have tons of the confirmed cases that Russia definitely obtains Starling, I mean Russian army. For those deliveries, they use the third countries like some of the Arab countries. I don't want to name those on my channel, but nevertheless, those Starlings are activated over there and somehow sent to Russia and appear on the front lines. Starling is out of clue whether this area or that area is controlled by Ukrainian forces or by the Russian forces, because everything might change dramatically with every minute. For this reason, it's hard to track the particular Russian Starlink and ban it. Usually the ban is done by Ukrainian FPV drones. I believe that Starlink should think about some sort of the mechanism of how to ban the Russian-used Starlinks. And this ban shouldn't touch Ukrainian-used Starlinks which sometimes obtained through the same schemes as the Russian Starlinks. Finally, Zelensky has removed this cringy person, the Security Council, the ex-Security Council of Ukraine, Danilov. I think that this guy is the old-school Soviet dinosaur and he's very, very incompetent in this business, let's say. And there is probably a good change for this position. I think it will make this functionality of Ukrainian security service much, much better. Today Ukraine announced the evacuation of the northern parts of the Kharkiv Oblast, very close to the Russian border. The Kharkiv is a very big city because of the problems with electricity and, and the constant shelling many of the people left the place. So for now it's not the biggest one, but still people live there, many people. I check out the Ukrainian news and they say that Putin is planning to occupy Kharkiv as well. And they say that after it probably Putin will stop the war temporarily, not attacking any longer. However, if he would face with significant resistance from Ukraine, he would decide to continue his special military operation. The media source where I got it from, Ukrainska Pravda, relied to the Russian sources. They say that those are very close to Kremlin and Putin. On one of the French channels, LCI, there was the discussion about the French military presence in Ukraine and the possible missions which French forces might conduct on Ukrainian territory. They looked through the different variants. The first one is that France will send the engineering forces to Ukraine. Well, thanks to the Chancellor Scholz, we already know that there are some of the engineers of NATO countries presented in Ukraine, helping to deal with Storm Shadow and Scalp. The second variant that France will deploy its engineers to demine Ukrainian territory and the instructors to train Ukrainian soldiers. Variant number three, France will defend Odessa, deploying its air defense to shut down the Russian jets. Variant number four, that France will deploy the forces to protect some of the Ukrainian areas, to release the enough forces of the Ukrainian army to act on the south and on the eastern side of the country. Variant number five, the French forces are in direct contact with the Russian soldiers, fighting against them together with the Ukrainians, and that would lead to a new global conflict, probably even a third world war. What are the actual steps of France right now? They supply more weaponry to Ukraine, we already see it, and they plan even to modernize the F-16s to be able to carry a French-made missile, sorry, aviation bombs. By the way, the French engineers already developed special adapters for Ukrainian Suhoi 24 tactical bombers, so they may carry now Storm Shadow and Scalp. Exactly the same stuff they'll do with F-16s. We have some of the satellite images showing the Russian oil tankers in the ports of North Korea. Experts say that North Korea obtains the Russian oil as exchange for weaponry. Could be, why not? There is a statement which came from the Polish Foreign Ministry. They say that they might shut down some of the missiles 
flying over the western Ukraine because those missiles create the threat for themselves, but they will do it in cooperation with NATO as organization, so they call NATO to take a decision to shut down some of the missiles over Ukraine. Kind of the interesting plan, we'll see how it works, but based on the recent news that Poland didn't even shut down the rocket which was flying over its own territory, I do not think that they will take a proper decision in the nearby future. My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so it helped me a lot. Also, if you want to support the channel, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.